Hi everyone, I'm Sharon Whitmore and this is Fulton Finance, your inside look at just how your tax dollars are being spent. On today's show, the community engagement sessions have started so that residents can weigh in on the 2017 budget. We'll have the details on the public hearings and we'll go inside the numbers to see how next year's financial plan will be different from years past. Fulton Finance will be back after the break. Welcome to Fulton Finance. I'm Sharon Whitmore, your host and Chief Financial Officer for Fulton County Government. It's that time of year again, and no, I'm not talking about the holidays, but rather budget season. State law requires that Fulton County pass its budget by the end of January, so in preparation, a number of steps have already been made to comply. However, this year is a bit different than many years past, and here's why. The proposed budget takes in consideration a number of legislative actions and voter approved changes that will impact the organization in a number of ways. The finance department, with the assistance from the county attorney and other agencies, gathered information to estimate the impact of these changes on the overall budget. The best estimates to date are reflected in the proposed budget but changes may be needed down the line as more information is available. Among the most prominent changes for FY 2017, the voter approved incorporation of unincorporated South Fulton into a new city. The transition of the health department services to the Fulton County Board of Health and the voter approved transportation special purpose local option sales tax, TSPLOSC. Hakeem Ashikoa is the finance director and oversees the budget process. Thanks for joining us, Hakeem. Thank you very much for having me here, Ms. Whitmore. It is a pleasure for me to be here to present our 2017 proposed budget to our Fulton County residents. Well, let's first give our viewers a recap of the 2017 budget process. The process that we used to determine uh, or prepare the budget for 2017 is the same process that we use for 2016. And that process is defined as budgeting for outcome. With budgeting for outcome, the county is able to improve its services with greater efficiency. Also, with budgeting for outcome, we were able to determine priorities of our taxpayers and we developed strategies and we funded programs and services to accomplish those priorities. In order to do this, departments were requested to submit what we called budget offers. With budget offers, they presented this information to the budget commission and they were able to explain to the Budget Commission on how they're going to achieve the desired results of those priorities that you know, we determine. And also, they provided measures, performance measures, which we, you know, damp, uh, which we termed that to mean. They provided us performance measures, which we will be able to gauge against the outcome of the programs. And we aligned each of these offers with the Board of Commissioners' priority areas, correct? Yes, Ms. Whitmore. The six priority areas that we align the programs to are all people are safe, all people have economic opportunities, all people are healthy, all people are self-sufficient, all people have trust in government, and all people are culturally and recreationally engaged. So let's talk about each area and how it will impact the budget. Um, let's start with all people are safe. Um, can you tell us how much of the overall budget is in that priority area and what some of the um, types of programs are that will be funded um, out of the all people are safe area? 
the county budget, the overall budget across all funds. There are about 12 to 14 funds that um, we are talking about here. The total budget is about 916 million, 916.5 million dollars. And out of that amount, 312 million dollars or 34 percent of the budget is for all people are safe. Within this all people are safe, there is a 7.4 million dollars of justice reinvestment fund which we will be able to use to improve or expedite the uh, court hearings and um, trials, we hope. Also, with these $7.4 million, we will also be able to ensure that any individual who commits a crime within the county will be incarcerated in the proper manner so that uh, they will not, hopefully, they will not reoffend. Also, with this $7.4 million, we will be able to engage the mentally ill criminals. We uh, will be able to assist them and provide them um, different care within our justice system. Now, the departments that are funded within the justice system, or all people are safe, are the uh, district attorney, the clerk of superior court, superior court, the sheriff. The sheriff has got the most amount in the budget because of the jail. Also, we have the magistrate court. We also have uh, the marshal, state court, and public defender, among others. That sounds like uh, quite a heavy lift for the justice agencies this year, um, implementing the Justice Reinvestment Initiative. We're looking forward to, uh, to see the outcome. Let's shift now and talk about the All People Are Healthy priority area. How does that translate into funding? Within All People Are Healthy, we are funding a total of $257 million, which is equivalent to 28% of our 916.5 overall budget total. The main departments that are funded there are the health and wellness and I should mention that you know come July 1st of 2017 our health and wellness department will now be part of the board state state of Georgia board of health system. Also we are funding the Grady health system out of this all people are healthy budget. Greatest budget is about $60 million, $45 million is for operations, and $15 million is for the debt service. So in addition to uh, the transition for the Board of Health, we also have a, a uh, model change in our behavioral health program. And on a slightly different note, uh, in the all people are healthy area, um, we also will be looking at expanding a couple of our um, water sewer treatment plants. Um, before we take a break, let's move into the all people have economic opportunities area and hear a little bit about what's in the budget in that area. Okay. Within the all people uh, economic opportunities area, we are funding $10 million out of the 916.5. This $10 million is, is equivalent to 1% of the budget. The main departments within the all people have uh, Economic opportunities are uh, we have the dream for the airport, you know, Charlie Brown Airport, which is about $2.8 million of budget. We also have the aging and youth, and also we have a Department of Housing and Community Services that you know, we're funding. Um, we, which, with all people have economic opportunities, we hope to be able to promote our one Fulton program. Select Fulton. Oh, Select Fulton. Select I'm so, Fulton. I'm sorry, it's a Select Fulton. We are also open to be able to explore different opportunities that, you know, we can expand on economic development. Thanks, Akeem. Let's take a break, and when we come back, more on the proposed 2017 budget. Stay with us. <laughs>
Welcome back to Fulton Finance. Hakeem Washakoa is with us today as we share details about the 2017 proposed budget. Before the break, we had started looking at the financial plan that's based on the Board of Commissioners' priority areas. Let's continue. Hakeem, in the all people are self-sufficient priority area, how is the budget impacted? Well, Ms. Whitmer, within the all people are self-sufficient area, our plan for the year is to spend $47 million or roughly 5% of our $916 million budget. And with this amount, our goal is to optimize access to services for our senior citizens for the year. We also looking forward to the opportunity to partner with Atlanta Public School System and Fulton County School System. And of course, you know, there are some other private providers you know, within the area that you know, we're looking to partner with so that we'll be able to increase our, our Fulton County students' achievement for the year of 2017. In the aging category, how much is the additional investment that the county is making this year? That's a $2 million that you know, we put in the budget for increase in the transportation services. And also, we're hoping to hire some camp employees to provide increased services within our senior multipurpose centers for our seniors. And in 2016, the county transitioned uh, its former human service grants and fresh grant programs into the community service program. Is that program expected to be continued into 2017? Yes, of course, Ms. Whitmore. The plan is to spend, I believe this year we spent $5.4 million, and our goal is to keep the same amount for the 2017 fiscal year. Thank you. So let's well. transition and talk about the all people are, um, all people trust government is efficient, effective, and fiscally sound. What is um, the plan for 2017 for that priority area? We will be spending about $234 million, or 26% of the budget. And within this area, I should mention that some of the departments there are finance, um, information technology, HR, uh, human resources, uh, purchasing department, and of course, uh, we also have the non-agency budget. And within the non-agency budget, we have uh, a pension contribution, our annual required contribution to the pension plan. It's about 30 something million dollars for all our DB employees that, um, or our employees that are in the DB plan. Also, our goal within this area is to continue modernization of our human resources. Um, we started that this year, and that we've made a great stride. I'm looking forward to better and uh, greater things happening in uh, this division. Also, one thing I need to mention is our infrastructure improvement. I can't leave that. You know, that's a $4 million that we put in the budget for 2017. <laughs> this $4 million will be used for debt services to pay for um, the $77 million bond that we are open to issue in maybe mid-2017, and this money is going to be used to improve county facilities. We also have $10 million in the budget for this year. Uh, that's part of the budget. Uh, that's actually part of the budget. And in 2016, we have $20 million. In 2017, we had $10 million. The $4 million that I mentioned when you add the 77 that we're going to be issuing in form of bond, plus the 20, plus the 10, we have roughly almost $110 million that the county is going to be spending on facilities improvement overall by the time we're done. And of course, the overarching objective of, of the all people trust government priority area is to continue to build um, a performance driven government, which I think in 2016, uh, we laid the foundation, if you will, and in 2017 we will we will begin construction of that in all of our um, uh, continued efforts in the HR agenda, with our performance management agenda, with our um, our uh, 
far-reaching facilities and uh, IT infrastructure improvements. So there's a lot going on in that one particular um, priority area. Yes, and if, if I may just add something, Ms. Whitmore. Um, I mean, this is something I should have said before, at least for 2016. One good thing that you know, we were able to do was to amend our antiquated, I mean, at least that's what I call it, 1953 budget law. And uh, we were fortunate to get uh, the state of uh, Georgia legislat legislators to approve the repeal of the law. And then, you know, our board was uh, kind enough to give us a new budget ordinance, which we are now using to prepare our budget. This ordinance gives us a greater flexibility in everything that we do. A lot of restrictions that, you know, we had in the past are now removed and we were able to really, really work efficiently uh, uh, compared to uh, the way we were operating before. And I think that those flexibilities will um, be seen in, in how our departments are able to deliver services um, throughout the, the year as we progress into 2017. Um, let's go ahead and move into our final uh, priority area. All people's lives are culturally and recreationally enriched. Um, what are the uh, financial plans for that priority area? Our plan is to spend about $56 million for 2017. And with the $56 million, we'll be able to continue uh, the funding for our contract for services program within the Arts and Culture Department. I should mention, actually, I should have mentioned this at the beginning, no department budget was reduced for 2017. We were able to maintain the same level of service, or even in some cases, we improved, or we're proposing to have improvement in some of our services. The other thing that, you know, we're funding out of uh, this priority area is the library. In a few years ago, uh, voters approved uh, bond referendum for us to do, I mean, uh, construct some new libraries and then uh, renovate some other libraries. We are pretty much done with uh, the construction of new libraries and in 2017, we hope to embark on the program of reno renovating all of those other libraries within the county. Our that plan that's right, I was just going to say a uh, $104 million yeah. um, phase two expansion. Hakeem, thank you so much. Um, we're going to take a break now and we'll be right back. We're wrapping up our discussion about the 2017 proposed budget. So Hakeem, as a recap, What's the bottom line in the general fund this year? Ms. Whitmer, the bottom line is this. For our revenue, we are projecting a $630 million in all of our various uh, revenue lines. And in the expenditure side, we will be spending $655 million. So what that means is $25 million will come out of our fund balance. And this $25 million compared to the beginning fund balance that we projected, which is $130 million, what that would do for us is it would get us to $105 million of projected ending fund balance for 2017. And this projected amount is uh, about 16.7% of our required fund, a minimum fund balance requirement. If I may just uh, bring to your attention, the board approved a resolution at the beginning of 2016 for us to maintain a 16.67 minimum fund balance in our general fund. So with what we're proposing, we're uh, a little bit above that amount. I also need to mention that the $25 million that we're going to be taking out of our fund balance is actually being used to pay for non-recurring expenses. So we do not expect this to become a burden for us in 2018 unless some new expenses come up at that time. But just looking at the items that we are spending the money on, 
These are things that you know, we consider to be a one-time um, items. So the one-time items would include the uh, Justice Reinvestment Initiative, that's $7.4 million. The, um, the $10 million for the funding for facilities yes. and the funding for the uh, IT infrastructure, yes. um, uh, the implementation of the county's IT roadmap. Yes. Those are the types of uh, non recurring um, items that we've included in the use of fund the balance, balance, staying in compliance with our fund balance um, reserve resolution. Yes. And, and you pointed out the change in policy. I would like to point out that that change in policy. Um, actually helped the county achieve uh, two credit rating upgrades yes. this year. So kudos to you and your staff for that. And you too, Ms. Whitmore. Well, let's, we let's do it without you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, let's switch gears and talk a little bit about the South Fulton Tax District. So what we have formally referred to as the South Fulton Tax District um, and again how we're going to handle that given the voters approve the city of South Fulton. In that budget, we have four months of uh, service level funding for South Fulton, for the entire South Fulton. We did four months. And the reason we're doing that is because according to the law, according to the state law, and uh, the fact that uh, South Fulton residents approved the referendum to create a new city of South Fulton, with all of that, South Fulton is expected to incorporate on May 1st. So what it means is at that time, they could determine what level of service that they want for the remainder of the year. We do not know yet whether they're going to want the county to continue providing the services for them. If they do, we'll have a contractual agreement for them. I mean, then you know, we'll be able to provide those services. Some of the services that we've been providing them along the way include fire, Police, planning, parks and rec, parks and recreation for all of the, all of the parks that we have in South Fulton. Something else that you know we did with the budget was we actually budgeted for eight months of uh, level of service in the FIB, which is Fulton Industrial Boulevard corridor. And the reason we did that was because we have been advised and informed by the county attorney that the county will still be required to continue providing services for that area. So we got four months of services for the entire South Fulton Special Services District and we have eight months of services, additional eight months of services for Fulton Industrial Boulevard Corridor. And since this is the proposed budget, um, we, we'll, we of course will continue to monitor any changes that we may need to make to that proposal as we get closer to January when the budget will be um, adopted in its, in its final form and we expect to be working with um, a transition uh, committee uh, to resolve some potential unanswered questions that may, that may be out there. But the bottom line is that the county is going to continue to provide services to the unincorporated citizens as we always have and will do so until such time as um, the city indicates that they are um, going to take over those services. So um, I guess one of the last things we wanted to talk about is how um, we're giving our residents a chance to see this budget planning process up close and personal. One thing that we have is the information that we are put on our website, you know, FultonCountyGA.gov. We have uh, information there on our proposed budget for 2017. Actually, we do have information on all our financial uh, data in, uh, on, on this website. What I would suggest for our citizens to do is go to FultonCountyGA.gov, look for the tab or look for the menu option uh, referring to budget, click that, and then you, know, you should be able to get the information that you want. Then the other thing that we have is uh, we have citizen engagements. Uh, we have about six, seven different uh, public hearings that we're going to be holding in different locations throughout the county. We also have in budget hearings, and citizens can come to any board, uh, board of commissioners meeting to speak on the budget. Thank you, Hakeem, for this great information. We'll be right back.
We thank you for joining us today for Fulton Finance. Special thanks to Fulton's Finance Director for joining us. We want to remind you that you are part of this budget process. Please stay engaged and by all means, let us know what you care about in the 2017 spending plan. I'm Sharon Whitmore and I'll see you next time on Fulton Finance.